Shalom family. Topic tonight is Flat Earth. Are you ready? You're listening to Morgan Cadwell with Wildly Unpopular, where we discuss all things wildly unpopular. This is going to get interesting. West plays music. Eat, sleep, debunk the globe, repeat. Eat, sleep, debunk the globe, repeat. Once you go flat, you don't go back. Got a bunch of globes back at home up in the trash. I'm not even really tripping if I get laughed at. Cause everybody here is about to get flat smack. Super excited about this topic tonight. I'm going to try not to make it too long. Just kind of hit some key points. But what do we know about Flat Earth? Let's see. We know that the moon landing was a hoax. We know that water always finds its level. We know that NASA's photos are always CGI, admittedly CGI. What does the Bible say about flat earth? Let's find out. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1, 14 through 18. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And here we have some context that the firmament is solid and kind of, you know, what it looks like. Job 37, 18. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass. So in Genesis 1, in the creation story, we have God creating the firmament, and he names the firmament heaven. But does it say that God created heaven, or does it say that God created the heavens, plural? If you flip back, you'll see it says heavens, plural, in most translations. So what am I saying? Am I saying that there's multiple firmaments? Yup. That's exactly what I'm saying. Nehemiah 9, 6. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. 2 Corinthians 12, 2, 4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. And I know this man, whether he was in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. Deuteronomy 10, 14. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. We had the third heaven and we had the highest heaven, So now in Apocalypse of Abraham, 19.4, And while he was still speaking, behold, the expanses under me, the heavens opened, and I saw on the seventh firmament upon which I stood, a fire spread out, and a light and dew and a multitude of angels, and a host of the invisible glory, and up above the living creatures I had seen. So we've now discussed the first heaven or firmament, the third heaven or firmament, and the seventh heaven or firmament. Isaiah 40, 22. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. So right here it says circle. So many people like to say, see, God is sitting on a circle. So that means it's a ball or a sphere. So that means the earth is definitely a globe. Because, you know, just forget about all the other flat earth verses all throughout the text. But anyway, 
This is not a globe earth text. This is not a globe earth verse. When it says circle, it means a flat circle. We know this because of context from other verses in the Bible. And how many times does the Bible say that the earth has a face? You're not going to find a face on a sphere. You find a face on a relatively flat surface. Not to mention he drew out the earth with a compass and he measured it with a line, which I'm pretty sure I end up mentioning at some point in one of these verses. If I don't, then I'll try to drop the verse in here somewhere. Job 22, 12 through 14. Is God not in the highest of heaven? Look also at the highest stars, how high they are. But you say, what does God know? Can he judge through thick darkness? Clouds are a hiding place for him so that he cannot see. And he walks on the vault of heaven. So I think this is a good time to have everyone think about the Tower of Babel. So you had these people coming together to build a tower. What were they trying to do? They were trying to reach heaven. They were trying to get to God. This is what Nimrod wanted to do. Nimrod gathered all these people because Nimrod wanted to go up there and establish himself higher than God. So he wants to establish himself higher than God. So he builds a tower that goes up. So let's think about a globe. Let's think about building a tower to reach heaven on a globe. What are the odds that God is sitting directly above you on a globe. Nimrod knew exactly where God was. He knew he was directly above him. He knew that if he built a tower high enough, that he would reach the heavens. What he did not know is that you actually cannot travel through the firmaments or the heavens when you're in your earthly fleshly body. And that's part of the reason why we're going to get new bodies after we die. Anyway, Nimrod's little plan failed, of course. We all know the rest of the story. But doesn't this story just make so much sense when you think about the facts that these people knew the earth was flat, they knew all they had to do was build a tower high enough, and they would eventually reach the firmament, and they were going to try to break through it because they knew that God was directly above them. There is no up on a globe. There's only an up relative to where you are. Up to you is not going to be up to someone in another country facing in a different direction. They're on the side, they're on the bottom, they're on the back. Up is not the same to you as it is to everybody else on a globe at the exact same time. On a flat earth, up is up and it's up to everybody at the same time. Guess what guys? The earth has pillars. Guess what else? The earth has ends. Enoch 33, 2 through 4. I saw the ends of the earth on which the heaven rests and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come out and I counted the portals out of which they proceed and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their courses and their positions and their times and their months. As Uriel, the holy angel that was with me, showed me. He showed me all the things and wrote them down. Also their names he wrote for me and their laws and their companies. Enoch 57, 2. And the pillars of the earth were moved from their place and the sound thereof was heard from one end of the heaven to the other in one day. 1 Samuel 2, 8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up a beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. First Chronicles 16.30 Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It can not move. Job 38.4-14 where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched out a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? 
while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the seas behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this is as far as you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? That it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like a garment. Psalm 104, 5. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. So here we see that the earth rests on pillars. I believe we even saw that the heaven that is directly above us, the firmament directly above us, rests on the edges of the earth. So if the earth is on pillars and it cannot be moved, why do we have a sunrise? Why do we have a sunset? Why do we have the moon going around and the stars and their constellations, yada yada? Well, guys, it's because the stars, the sun, and the moon have orbits and circuits, and they move around us. Enoch 36, 3. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. Enoch 41, 5 through 8. And I saw the chambers of the sun and the moon from where they proceed and where they come again and their glorious return. And how one is superior to the other and their stately orbit and how they do not leave their orbit and they add nothing to their orbit and they take nothing away from it and they keep faith with each other in accordance with the oath by which they are bound together. And first the sun goes out to traverse his path according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits. And mighty is his name forever and ever. And after that I saw the hidden and the visible path of the moon, and she accomplishes the course of her path in that place by day and by night, the one holding a position opposite to the other before the Lord of Spirits. And they give thanks and praise, and they do not rest. For unto them is their thanksgiving rest. For the sun changes oft for a blessing or a curse, And the course of the path of the moon is light to the righteous and darkness to the sinners in the name of the Lord, who made separation between the light and the darkness. And Psalm 19.6 speaks of the sun. It says, It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. In conclusion, God created the firmament, which he named heaven. He created the multiple firmaments, which he calls heaven. We discussed that there are as many as seven mentioned in scripture. The earth has pillars. It has foundations where it rests and it does not move. We discussed that the sun, the moon, and the stars have orbits and circuits and they move around our enclosed earth. That's pretty much all I wanted to tackle at this point. This is probably going to be video part one. Flat earth is such a big topic. You could make a million videos about flat earth. I'm not going to make a million, but I'm definitely going to make at least a few more. This is just kind of a starter, kind of a build up to get a basic premise going. And I think that about wraps it up. It is Shabbat here for me. I don't know if it'll still be Shabbat by the time you guys are listening, but if it is, Shabbat Shalom and good night.